Now let's talk about some things, though, that are new, some updates in QuickBooks Online. And some of these are pretty exciting, I think. Now, I'm just covering some of the most recent ones. Um, always make sure you check out the QBO blog. So qboblog.com on a regular basis because they're always posting updates out there. And also, if you'd subscribe to my blog, longforsuccess.com slash blog, I am going to do a better job. I know I have not been blogging in a while because I've been on the road so much, but I'm going to do a better job of sharing updates um, out there and new things as well as upcoming training events and things like that. So subscribe to my blog as well. Again, longforsuccess.com slash blog. So let's talk about some of this what's new in QuickBooks Online. And I think this update was like last month, um, right before Christmas time or the holidays. They came out with this design enhancement and some of the changes. You'll notice that the um, the header bar up here changed to all kind of a dark gray, if you will. You always know you're in as the accountant user when in the upper left corner, instead of saying Intuit QuickBooks, it will say accountant. And you can always click that to go in, back into your um, accounting uh, dashboard, your client dashboard and stuff. They moved the quick create instead of in the middle, it's over here on the far right corner now. So all of the icons are on the far right. The little magnifying glass is the universal search that you have. They updated the left navigation bar to be the lighter colors instead of the dark blue. They kind of changed some fonts and colors here on the money bar and, and various things. And same thing down here on the customer list. They kind of updated all that. So most of you have probably seen this update so far. Most of you have probably already seen that. Your clients have seen that. I believe it's rolled out to pretty much everybody by now. But this is the newest, latest update that's coming out, which I didn't have in any of my companies. I had to create a new company in order to get this change here. And I had to do it not through QuickBooks Online Accountant and adding a new client there, but through QuickBooks.com and adding a new client down there. This is the latest, greatest update it's not yet rolled out, I don't think, to very many people. So this is going to be rolling out. Notice this left navigation bar is all changed over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and log into that one. Um, so over here I've got Michelle's Magic Shop. <laughs> so I had to come up with a name. So I've got a new company with the new layout here. So our dashboard over here, they kind of changed that a little bit. There's not any real information out here, not a lot. So the dashboard's updated a little bit. Banking's pretty similar. The sales area, instead of seeing customers, vendors, and employees on the left navigation bar, now we see sales and expenses. And within our sales, here's all sales, which is what you're used to. Before we had under transactions, we had the sales center there. Well, now we have the sales center here combined with the customer center here. So those two things are now combined and we've got a link to our products and services list over here on the right hand side. So now we don't just have to go up to the gear to get to our products and services list. We've got, got that right here. So that's under the sales area and also now we have under expenses instead of saying vendor, it's combined our expenses and our vendors. So you have both of them right there within one tab on the left navigation bar. So everything is very, very similar. They just moved things around a little bit and updated the navigation. And I honestly like it. I have been using this um, in the QuickBooks labs where you can turn on some of these things ahead of time. If you've never seen that, if you click on the big gear up on this top icon bar here, and one of the things that I like to share with people is um, sometimes people call it the like in Dallas one time, somebody said, ma'am, that there's a wagon wheel. <laughs> and up in Canada, they told me that's a cog. And somebody else has called it a sprocket. You can call it whatever you want. But in all the QuickBooks training materials and everything, that's the gear. We typically call it the big gear. But under the gear up here, QuickBooks Labs is where they're testing out new things before they push it out to everybody. So we've had the alternative left navigation where it combined the centers together, the customer center and the sales center and the expenses and the vendor centers. We could turn that on uh, several months back. And now they finally, they're pushing that out to everybody. So check out these things. These are like beta testing things that are coming soon. So you might want to check some of those out. Um, but this has been kind of out in the QuickBooks labs for a while and now they are pushing that out to everybody. Now we've also got something else that's coming. It's not out here yet. Um, well, this one is out here now. Uh, the QBO payments. 
If you sign up to get paid online, which I recommend you do, I love it. There's two versions of the QuickBooks Online payments. There's the paid version, like about 20 bucks a month, where you get lower swipe rates and percentage rates on your credit card fees. But then on the ACH or the bank transfers, that's free. So there's also under QBO payments, there's a free plan, a pay-as-you-go plan. If you're accepting credit cards, it's going to be a higher swipe rate than the paid plan. But under both the free plan and the paid plan, the bank transfers are now free. They used to be $0.50. Cents. They're free. Whether people pay you $50, $500, or $5,000, it's free. Now, I used to love it because it was $0.50 cents per transaction. Free is even better, right? So I absolutely love that. But what it used to do when we would create an invoice and we would click save and send, on that email you could then choose whether you wanted to let your clients pay with a credit card or with a bank transfer. I'm a cheapskate. I usually uncheck credit card unless they ask for it. Well now, not only do we see it when we're, we click save and send on that email preview, we can do it there, but we also write on the invoice. So we, we, this is a picture of the top part of your invoice. Now this is right up here on the top part of your invoice where you can choose what you want. Now one thing that I didn't see, and I may have overlooked it, but I didn't see it when I was looking for it. What I would really like is the way to go in and set a preference for by customer or an overall company preference that tells it which options you want. Like I always want to make it a bank transfer, but on certain occasions or certain clients, then I want to be able to say, okay, I'll take a credit card. So I would like the option to set that as a preference either in our customer setting or in the overall company settings. You guys can help me with that by clicking on the gear and feedback and send that feedback into Intuit. You know, I love the updates that Intuit's making for us. Like, I love having this right here on the invoice, but I always want more. <laughs> the poor product managers, whatever they do, we always want more. We're never happy. So help me with that. We can request that. But that is free now. Um, so if you haven't started using it yet, I highly recommend it. Just on the under the account and settings, click on payments and learn more and you can sign up there and see the details for all that. So here's one of the other new things and this is not out yet. I have not seen this, you know, I just got the new updated one that I showed you about. This was in a QBO blog post, which remember I told you to subscribe to that QBO blog post. So this is one that's been announced, but I haven't seen it yet. So you are not going to probably see it yet either. I'm not sure how soon it's coming, whether it's going to be, you know, next week, next month, two months, three months or what. But in the QuickBooks Online mobile app, we have this feature down here, and I'm going to zoom in on it so you can see it better. We have this feature um, in the mobile app where you can track like the progress of your invoices. You can see when it was sent, when it was viewed, when it was paid, and when it was deposited. And if they partially paid it, instead of being a full green circle under paid, it's like a half green circle for paid. So I love that feature, and that's in the mobile app on invoices, and now they're going to be bringing that to QuickBooks Desktop. So you can see here um, the status is going to be there, and what they've got is instead of just having sales and customers, which I showed you just a second ago, we've got a new tab here for invoices, and it looks like we're going to see a bunch of them here, and then it also we're going to be able to manage our recurring invoices and transactions here. So let's go back into QuickBooks and talk about a couple of things out there. Um, I wanted to mention to you about the recurring transactions and how you could set that up. And then I also wanted to discuss that viewed option right here where you can see if it's viewed. So I'm going to go ahead and pop back over into QuickBooks maybe. Let me get to the right one. Uh, that was the wrong one. Oops, oops, oops. Give me a second. I have too many things open. Not my prepared 1099s. Must be this one. Oh my goodness. Heather, help. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Prepared to 99. So let's close this. This was in my Larry's Landscaping. I want to be in Michelle's Magical Shop or Magic Shop. So I'm just going to switch <laughs> back to it right here. All right. So see how fast it is to switch in and out of client companies? So in Michelle's Magic Shop, a couple of things that we wanted to mention under recurring transactions, and I could have done this in Larry's as well. Yes, now when I set up, whoops, let's pull up an invoice. I can make an invoice recurring or no, let me do a sales receipt, make it recurring. So I'm going to go to a recent sales receipt that I had and I'm going to click on make recurring down in the bottom here. 
this is where you can choose right here under your payment method. So if you want to automatically charge somebody's, um, let's put Visa card there. No, no, let's go ahead and leave it on check. If you want to automatically charge their credit card or hit their bank account. Now you have to have your clients or customers file or sign an authorization form to allow you to automatically um, charge their account or debit their, their bank account and stuff. So they have to authorize that for you. But what you'd want to do is you don't set up a recurring invoice, you set up a recurring sales receipt. With that sales receipt, you need to put in that payment information. In this one, I'm not signed up for QuickBooks Payments because it's a sample company here. But you would normally click to enter the payment information. Same thing if I said I was doing this for a credit card. Um, you'd click to put that information in there. Yes, you can automatically hit their bank account now. It used to be we could only do recurring credit cards. Now we can do recurring ACHs as well. So that's something new and changed. Also, once you put this credit card information in here, this is going to change. And right here, you'll see a little box that says process payment upon saving. It's critical that you check that box. Otherwise, it'll create that recurring sales receipt, but it won't do the payment portion. So after you put in the payment information, you also then need to check the box that's going to show up right in here that says process payment upon saving. So make sure you're doing that. The other thing that I wanted to show you was on seeing that they viewed the invoice, under your um, company settings, under accountant settings, when you're looking at the online delivery of your sales forms, do not check the box there that it says attach the sales form or attach the invoice as a PDF, don't do that. Because when you email it to them, you want them to have to click view the invoice. Then they can see the invoice and they can print it or save it as a PDF themselves. But if you just send it as a PDF, they can download it and open it and look at it and you don't know that. So on the updated status of invoices, to know that they viewed it, you want them to check that blue box. So don't attach that as a PDF. Okay, so that's kind of a helpful hint for you there. But I'm anxious for this stuff to come. I think it's great and I'm looking forward to that. A couple of other changes that we had is in the Find a Pro Advisor area. They are emphasizing now and helping clients. So if a client logs in to search for a pro, they can quickly, instead of just searching by location, they can choose what service they want that they're looking for. So it's important for you to go update your profile and put out there what services you're providing. So if somebody's looking for specific services, you've indicated on your profile that you provide those services. So make sure you update your Find a Pro Advisor profile. Also, in the Find a Pro Advisor profile, we'll now see some information on your performance. Guess what I haven't done until last night? <laughs> I didn't update my profile to include my social links for um, LinkedIn, for Twitter, for Facebook, for YouTube, for my website and stuff. Go out to your profile and update that profile. I also need to update my picture, it's very old. <laughs> um, but go out and update that. And then these are some updates to show us how many people are looking at your um, profile, which I think is kind of cool. So make sure you're updating those things as well.